Hello everybody and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This time we're going to be reviewing Pinky Apple Pie, episode 9 of season 4, episode uh, 74 overall, released on January 11th, 2014, written by Natasha Levinger and storyboarded by Emmett Hall and Tony Cliff. This is one of the episodes that, the episodes that was released on the San Diego Comic Con and to review it with me I have my lovely co host and good friend Norman Sanso. Hey there James. How are you doing man? Uh I'm not doing I am in autopilot right now. Oh. <sighs> it's like, you you wouldn't imagine this. A, a little bit of a setup here for everyone who's listening because right now in Spain is like the jungles of Siberia. And I, I say that intentionally because it's damp and foggy and really moody, but it's also cold and very depressing. It's like if they con- com- combine a, a rainforest with the tundra. It's amazing. I'm sure someone out there is experiencing it right now or every day. It's it's the kind of atmosphere that you want to have when you want to write some emo poetry and listening to My Chemical Romance. It's like so sad and depressing. Oh my god. Oh god. Really though, no, it's My Chemical Romance. Oh boy. I cannot think of any other emo punk uh, 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 music groups, okay? I'm not <laughs> hip like all those other... Against that they're hip and I, mother, and I am an old crotchety man. Listen to Freddie Mercury and the police. <laughs> uh, still good band, still good band. But anyway... Yeah, so, Pinky Apple Pie. Uh, well, like, like I said, this is the one, one of the four episodes that was... Uh, uh, like teased in the San Diego Comic Con in and and that uh, we had that that uh, preview video. of the song yeah the the, the the apples to the core music video mm-hmm. that people already knew about it they were making kind of remixes of it mm-hmm. even before the episode came out so uh, this one was another one that got a lot of hype along with the Power Ponies episode mm-hmm. and, the, and the the season premiere and the the flight to the finish episode mm-hmm. what about you were you hyped for it. Well, technically, I wasn't that much because, well, the preview that they showed at the San Diego Comic Con was just a song. So, a song is good. Like, all the hypeness was drained out because there's already a song. I know the song. I heard the song. The song is good. I love the song. There's nothing wrong with the song. Now, the question is, why is Pinky with them? And, well, that's the question we're going to dive into when we review the episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's not get ahead of ourselves. You're not going to believe me when I say this, but this is the episode that I was hyped for the most. Oh, really? No. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't. I, I was. I was hyped for the Power Ponies episode because I knew the episode was going to be awesome, uh, and in the end, it was awesome. So there was no disappointment there. And I, I was hyped for the rarity <laughs> episode, but I am biased towards rarity, so uh, <laughs> that, that doesn't that doesn't help. But I was really hyped for this one because. I am emotionally invested in every single one of the characters involved in the episode. Uh, for me, the Apple family, they are some of the most realistic, most interesting, heartwarming characters in the entire show because of how level-headed and normal they are. Like in a world of talking horses and magical unicorns and flying pegasi, the Apple family are the core of normality and mundanity that brings a lot of richness to the land because yeah i mean when you have a world so wild and weird and fantastical you need to have some semblance of reality so the magical stuff still carries some powerful awe and and wonderment so it's used like a counterpart uh so for me the apple family has always been a very uh, a very interesting source of uh feels and emotions and every episode involved in involving them has that like apple family reunion family appreciation day the super speedy cider squishy 6000 every episode involving them it's always a big emotional investment for me and i am also i'm also invested on pinkie pie on an emotional level in that she is in my opinion, the best representation of what the show is all about. It's a show about making you feel happy and about uh, giving you a good time and having uh, having a good time watching these ponies being happy and cute and awesome. So I am both involved in these two characters. So 
I was really hyped to see it. And I'm going to say this right away. I think this is me say, uh, saying that my uh, maybe I did, I did hype the episode way too much because my expectations were not completely met. <laughs> I thought, I thought so. I thought so. I, I, I'm not. I, I, I'm going to be the first one to say this is just my opinion, and I'm not saying the episode is bad because my expre- my my expectations were not met. I'm just saying that there is an aura of disappointment, and I'm going to try to deconstruct it as we review the episode. Okay, cool. And you know, like you told me, James, that when we review an episode, we take it for what it's worth. An episode as a whole. We don't add in our ideas to it. We take it as a whole and we review it as it is. And well, I, I do want to know what's your opinion on it. And well, sharing opinion is good. Well, uh, so okay, I think that it, it, that's my that that will be my review in a nutshell. Is that I thought it was a good episode. It is a good episode. No, it is. It just didn't meet my expectations. And if we want to know more about it, we may have to go balls deep into spoilers and start talking about it. Indeedy then. So, go take a break or pause the episode here and go watch it if you haven't watched it. And be back in, well, five seconds maybe. And we wait. Go, go watch yeah. it now. Go watch it now. We'll wait, we'll wait for you guys. Mm-hmm. So, you're done? All right, Nathan. So, James, let's get into this. So, uh, the episode starts with Pinky visiting Twilight in uh, probably the scariest of ways. Uh, personally, I don't know how this pony moves, but I love it because you can see when Twilight is about to take the book from the shelf that Pinkie Pie is already hiding behind the books. Oh, it's virtually impossible to do that even for any... Oh, God. Pinky is just Pinky. It, it's Pinkie Pie and... In, in in my interpretation of her, she is self-aware that she's a cartoon character. Oh, yeah. One day, she's going to come out of the screen and just go uh, all out on a rampage, throwing candy, color, fluffy clouds and friendship <laughs> all over the place. But, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I just love that. It's like, oh, my God, she's perfect. Great, yeah. w- great way to, to introduce her. Oh, um, true. And she is wondering what is Twilight doing? Like she's in her library. What are you doing? What are you doing in your library? Oh, I'm studying genealogy. What is genealogy? <laughs> that Lyra comes out singing genealogy. No. Um, so yeah, it's like Pinky uh, uh, gets an interest in genealogy because they tell them they tell her that is the study of family and, uh, and and family origins. Mm-hmm. So she starts reading a scroll that she takes without dipping the rest of the scrolls over. Uh, relevant, by the way. You're going to go, we're going to go back to that later. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. she starts reading the scroll, and then she finds out that she's related to someone in Ponyville she didn't know of. And mm. she quickly goes to meet this someone, and this someone is none other than Applejack. Yep, and bursts through the door. Hello, cousin! <laughs> You know, it, uh, you, you're an idiot. Why did you have to make the connection with GTA 4? Uh, because it's cousin. Want to go bowling? Uh, anyway, it's a good one. It's a good one. It's a good joke. Uh, Everybody's doing it. <laughs> Everybody, you're the first one. You're the first person that I that I that I saw uh, making that that joke. Um, oh no, there's 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 more before me, and there's going to be more after me. I blame you. Uh, <laughs> and it's funny because the Apple family is very ac- acceptable. Uh, ac- uh, they, they, are, they accept Pinky really, really quickly into their circle in that. that but in my opinion, that's a good idea. That's a good thing. Uh, mm-hmm. And it shows that these characters, they already know each other, of course. Uh, right. they, they trust each other enough to see like, oh, my God, you're my relative. That's awesome. You're not part of now part of my family. And. It seems to be weird, but when you think about it, how many times have we seen Pinkie Pie interact with the Apple family in a closer level? Oh, there's a few times here and there, but nothing to the extent of, um, you can say, their family. But the thing is, with Applejack and the Apple family, their focus or the way they are, they enjoy being with family. And knowing that you have another family member or discovering another family member... This is good for them because, hey, our f- Apple family's um, bloodline 
it is expanding. And if you think about it, even with Brayburn in Appaloosa, the way he reacts to Applejack coming, he was generally happy. And, you know, I think all apples are positively happy when they meet family members. Even in that, um, what was the episode with the family reunion? What was it called? Yeah, the Apple Family Reunion yeah. episode. That one, that one was a, a pile of hard worm on a pile of hard worm. It was really touching to see the, mm-hmm. the Apple Family coming together and get uh, getting together uh, in in such an intimate manner. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And well, having more to the family that's good. And well, uh, one thing uh, I have to say when the whole chatting was going on in the Apple Family's house. Um, Apple Bloom bounced on the sofa and so far spring sprung up and Applejack just nonchalantly covers it with a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> I want, I will say uh, Apple Bloom's uh, shouting and bouncing uh, at the rhythm of I have another sister, I have another sister is so cute. Well, it is. And it's so heartwarming is like this you are going to hear me say that word all the time during this review okay but it is it's so touching even even when uh, when when i was waiting for this episode to come out i was i was <laughs> hoping that one of the things Pinkie pie will do in the episode is calling applejack cousin and that's the first thing she says <laughs> to applejack and i was like oh my god that's awesome it's perfect <laughs> i obviously wasn't doing any any connection with Grand Theft Auto 4 because I never <laughs> played that game. <laughs> but it's funny. They are like, oh my god, that's 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 cool. And I think that's where I thought the episode started to go the way I was hoping it will go. Mm-hmm. Like, in, in, in my wishful thinking, which I stupidly decided to get myself carried by it, mm-hmm. I, uh, I started to think, oh my god, they're going this way. So, yeah, it's like, Apple, Applejack is enthusiastic and happy to have a new member in the family, but they are not absolutely sure if this is actually canon. Because, yeah, I mean, because they they read on the last on the bottom of the of the scroll that Pinkie Pie brought to prove that she is part of the Apple family, mm-hmm. and it happens to be blurry. It, it's like smudged. That part is uh, a bit smudged and not clear. So, in order to find out who if she really is an apple. They have to go visit the uh, Auntie Goldie Delicious that lives in the other side of the planet, apparently, because she's so far away. So they decide to organize a trip, road trip, all together, all enthusiastic about it. And <laughs> in their enthusiasm, they overload the cart, which well. proves to be a poor idea when you decide to break into song halfway through the trip. <laughs> oh, yes, song. But I don't know. I mean, I, I'm just excited with how the Apple family were excited to have a road trip because think about it. When we were young, at that age, all locked up at home, and when father or mother says, let's do a road trip, we get excited. This is... Yay! This is me... Yeah, yeah. Your case, this is me being an old fart because personally, I didn't enjoy road trips whatsoever oh, oh no the first part of it is um awesome like the the first um five minutes of a road trip is awesome then it all goes downhill after the six <laughs> but still um people do love road trips and in the states it's kind of a big deal for them to go on a road trip yeah but me being this very old fart i just never liked road trips i i I am an inside guy i am the kind of guy i i am like a cat i don't want to go out i want to stay home but yeah i mean i am not that enthusiastic about road trips but their enthusiasm was contagious so Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i i i did enjoy the 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 road trip part and i have to say regarding the song Mm -hmm. this is the catchiest song the season has has thus far yeah, here's the thing. I noticed most of the Apple songs, uh, song with Applejack, are really catchy. Raise this bar, raise this yeah. bar. One, two, three, four. Now uh, we have opportunity in this very community. Yeah, perhaps so, seeds. Yeah, perhaps is, seeds. Yeah. Well, you gonna? It, it is obvious that yeah. uh, the Apple family they are they they have the potential to have a lot of uh, very catchy, very interesting, very cool sounding songs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, it also helps that this is the song <laughs> that we first heard like oh, half yeah. a year ago during the San Diego Comic Con preview. So it. 
does help in that regard. That of course it has to be really catchy. Um, the the choreography during the song is unbelievable. When I was when I was looking at the previews uh, at this that animatic, when I was looking at what they were doing with the characters, I was like, there is no way they can pull that off. Because it's like those those leg movements and the the way they are tapping the hooves and doing kind of like a rodeo routine. I was like, no way they pull it off. And they did they they pull it off. They pull it off very fluently, very very nice, very good. It's kind of like a way, weird contrast when you see Pinkie Pie just bouncing on top of the cart in a very awkward manner. Well, I think that the whole song was good, and uh, animation is a bit stiffy with the dancing, but you know. Overall, it's still good. You know what? No, I'm going to debate you on the animation being stiffy. The animation wasn't wasn't stiffy at all. You look at the way they're dancing and at the way they are bouncing, the way they are just crossing their legs and moving while at the same time pulling from the cart. Try to make that animation look fluid and and fun. I don't think it's that stiff at all. Mm, I think it could be that why to me it's awkward because they were trying to match it up with the song, so that could be it. But well, uh, have you do you you know what a metronome is? Of course, yeah, yeah. they were using the cart as a sort of metronome. It's like that marks the rhythm of the song. In my opinion, I thought it worked really well. But anyway, we're taking too much time on the song. Let's move on. The song is awesome. Yes, and the indeed. animation is awesome in the song. Case closed. Yes, let, let's move on. Anyway, the Apple family are so happy and so cheerful with the song. And they, they are so enthusiastic about it that they end up trashing the cart. And in a weird, in a weird way, the consequences on the song carry on <laughs> onto the real world out of the song. So they destroy the cart because Big Macintosh overloaded. So... Mm-hmm. They decide to do a MacGyver and <laughs> transform the remains of the cart into a raft, and they decide to go down the river. Mm-hmm. In, 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 and right when they are about to jump on the raft, they, they find out that Pinkie Pie has been doing a photo album <laughs> with uh, heirlooms and, me- and memories and pictures of the trip so far. Mm-hmm. And so they start going down the river, and immediately they get lost. And not... All not is not the fault of one of them because they all get lost in 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 in, in a team. It's like they work together as a team to get lost. <laughs> it's like no. Uh, first, Apple Loon tries to get the map, and she ends up knocking it overboard, taken by a fish, and the fish is taken by a needle. <laughs> by, by the way, funniest running joke of the oh, entire yeah. episode. Mm-hmm. And not only that, but Granny Smith decides to take over the oh, over the wheel. <laughs> And she's like, oh, don't worry, I know where to go. I, this is not the scariest cave in yeah. all of Equestria. Yeah. Then they go down the cave, and of course, it is the scariest cave in oh, all of Equestria. <laughs> Which, <laughs> it's, it's actually, it's actually a very, a very effective gag. I wasn't, I was, I was really worried that they were going to go like, oh, great. They, they are never going, this is going to be the reason why they never reach Goldie Delicious House, right? They're going to get trapped in their cave by the cousins of the diamond dogs. They get trapped by diamond wolves or something like that, right? Oh, oh James, I just thought of something. Uh, in that cave, they, they were going in, the scariest cave, it reminded me of Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. <laughs> but if you, without the chicken getting his head chopped off. Yes. Uh, you know what? I wasn't thinking about it like about it like that, but I think this is like an outsider's view of what happened in the cave. <laughs> uh, oh, and before that, when Pinkie Pie took a picture, um, red eye. I just love that minor detail on that picture. <laughs> that was yeah, that was a cool detail. That of course, Applejack has green eyes. She's mm-hmm. going to get red eye, uh, uh, red dots on her eyes when taking a photograph. Mm-hmm. And Apple Bloom, she has green eyes too. Um, no, Apple Bloom has the same color eyes as Granny Smith. They are uh, orange and yellow. Mm. But still, uh, mm-hmm. red eyes. <laughs> still a little fun detail. Awesome. Uh, of course, they come out of the cave absolutely traumatized, which may- <laughs> leads me to believe the cave was moderated by Derpy Buru uh, <laughs> oh, no. or something like that. <laughs> we went through the cave without the not safe for work filter on. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, boys. And uh, just. Uh, absolutely pissed off and angry <laughs> and frustrated, Applejack decides to take the wheel. <laughs> but Granny Smith wants to take the wheel too. But so does Apple Loom. But so so does Big Mac. So they start arguing. 
And I'm thinking, oh my god, this is my family during Sunday nights. It's, <laughs> it's so, it's verbatim. And and I'm going to say something right here to everyone who's listening. If you live with your family and you didn't feel attached to that scene, you have you have no soul. Your family is not normal. <laughs> Every family argues. Mm, Every indeed. family has conflict. And that was the most lighthearted, funny way to portray it because they get so angry, they knock the wheel overboard, it gets on a duck, and the duck gets taken by the <laughs> eagle then. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and because of this, they, they end up going down a waterfall, which, of course, eventually destroys the raft. Oh, yeah. Oh, good thing uh, they're, they're wearing life, um, life preservers. Oh, yeah, they were, living, they were wearing life preservers all the time. Yeah, yeah safety and, first, good for the children. And, and uh, Big Mac's life preserver was cute. <laughs> yeah, like Big Mac's life preserver was, uh, was a rubber ducky <laughs> life preserver. It was, a, it was adorable. Mm-hmm. Um, so finally, they end up arriving to uh, Goldie Delicious' house uh, with what's left of the cart, which is not even a cart. It's just oh. a bunch of wooden plank boards. <laughs> smashed together but then they find out that Goldie Delicious is not in the house she's left for something and so Pinkie Pie uses that moment to go get some more paper for her uh, notebook because she's running out of space <laughs> and in that that moment that that moment where the family Apple family is left alone Applejack says how sad she is that uh, Pinkie Pie had to see them in their war- at their worst arguing and getting angry at each other and in conflict and Pinkie Pie returns saying, are you kidding? You're the most awesome family ever. Mm -hmm. Because you stay together through the worst things and you remain as a unit. You are so, you are so great. And right in that uh, happy bonding moment, uh, Goldie Delicious shows up. Mm -hmm. And uh, she opens the, by the way, I am still conflicted. I don't know if Goldie Delicious is a mare or a stallion. Oh, a mare. She's a mare. She doesn't look like a mare at all. Oh, no, she's old. She's old. And she, a mare. I, I know, I know, but you know what? It doesn't help that that <laughs> Peter New is the voice actor for Goldie Delicious. Oh, yeah. Mm. I was like, that is a very manly woman. <laughs> <laughs> but so, anyway. Uh, uh, Goldie Delicious opens the, opens the house, which happens to be f- chock full of cats. Mm. <laughs> she's a crazy old cat lady. Not only a cat, she also had a what? A, a jaguar? A a jaw- what are you kidding? She had a house like she had like twenty cats in the house. Yeah, and a Watch cheetah. Watch this again. And a cheetah, yeah. like big huge she cheetah. Had, she had all all types of cats inside the house. Like e- even when she was emptying the house to let them in, come in, like three or four cats came out, and she was carrying cats yeah. when coming in. And oh God. Oh, by the way, all of those cats must come from their piece side of the family because they all had a dirt. Uh, they, they had their eyes and with their tongue sticking out, like going, <laughs> oh, they, man. Were, they were adorable and funny, by the way. It mm. was awesome. <laughs> I, lo- I, lo- I-, I love crazy cat ladies. The-, the crazy cat lady from The Simpsons is one of my favorite characters. <laughs> oh, yeah. And rarity. <laughs> and rarity, of course. Hey! <laughs> Anyway, uh, we find out that Goldie Delicious does have a huge collection of Apple Family heirlooms and, and, and memorabilia. And we see her pulling a book from a pile of books. She takes the one from the base without <laughs> knocking the rest of the, of the pile. Yeah. Huh. She could be a magician. Oh, uh huh. Maybe. Who knows? And we also find out that she likes to eat, uh, sweets, uh, sweets and, Ooh. And uh, uh, what are the gingerbread houses? Mm-hmm. Ooh, the connections! I see them. So then she pulls out the book. She opens it. They read the the part where it's supposed to say that Pinkie Pie is part of the Apple Family, but again, the part is smudged <laughs> and is not clear at all. So they are they are kind of disappointed, which mirrors my reaction to this discovery. But they they move on from there because they are happy to to consider Pinkie Pie part of the family because she's such a good friend and mm-hmm. she's so close to them that of course she's part of the family. Oh yeah. And then with a new card that Goldie Delicious has given them, they go back to the they go back to their house, 
learning that it doesn't matter if you argue with your family. What's important is that you stay together through the difficult times. And that it doesn't matter if you are not a part of someone's family. If you are a very good friends with them, it's almost like you're your family to them. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, uh, the, the, the way you word it was a bit um, confusing, but I understand what you're trying to say. As long as, every, uh, as, long as one person understands what I'm saying, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's the kind of thing like uh, you're so close to the family, you're considered as family. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't tell me that hasn't happened to you. Like you have a friend who is who you've known your whole life and your family know, has known their whole life and you're so close to them and everybody likes everybody and is like yeah we consider you part of the family yeah, you're yeah. good yeah it is something like that and that's good that's good so there the episode ends with <laughs> the Apple family arguing again oh yeah <laughs> argue 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 oh, and then Pinkie Pie wants to join in yeah <laughs> Pinkie Pie joins in and of course they argue and that's how the episode ends uh, boys oh, overall a, a really nice episode it is a nice episode. Um, like I said, it's not bad, but mm. I was hoping we would get some sort of conclusion. But you know, uh, that could be your um, hype for the episode because you overhyped it. Well, no, there is... The, okay, there is... Uh, I was already expecting this episode was going to have some sort of cliffhanger because it's the late motif mm-hmm. during the entire season to have a cliffhanger that I'm pretty sure is going to pay off in the end on a, on a future episode mm-hmm. we have way too many clues that point that Pinkie Pie is part of the Apple family mm-hmm. uh, the way that she likes to eat gingerbread houses the same way that Goldie Delicious likes mm-hmm. or that she can pick uh, uh, scrolls from the base without knocking the entire tower the same way that Goldie Delicious can take books from the base without knocking the entire tower mm-hmm. uh, the way that, that Goldie Delicious hair is puffy pu- puffy and kind of like curly the same way that Pinkie Pie's is mm-hmm. so there are way too many evidences that are likely aiming at Pinkie Pie being part of the apple uh, 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 part of the apples so I was expecting for there to be some sort of closure or conclusion right now this feels like emotional blackmailing in that in that we're going to keep your we're going to keep the hype and the mystery around this character up until later on in the season or perhaps maybe in the future which in my opinion that that's fine but it's like it, it's like i cannot uh, uh have an emotional conclusion about this i am i am in the air i'm waiting for there to be some sort of closure to this story and that's probably my least favorite kind of uh, kind of stories in that they drag you mm. in, they pull you in with all the different storytelling and narrative resources possible, and they are all very well used. And they don't give you a closure. They don't give you closure. They don't give you conclusion. They start a character arc and they don't complete it. And there is this would piss me off way more if it wasn't because. The characters were so good. Now I understand why you don't like it. And, well, I do get it, but the thing is, um, it didn't really bother me that much because, well, A, it could be because it's Pinkie Pie and Applejack. And Applejack is one of my top trees and Pinkie Pie is one of my top uh, six. You just place it wherever you want. And, yeah, it didn't really bother me that much. I didn't notice the clues until you told me. And that was awesome. And yeah, I mean, she could be a pie or she could be a apple. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, it didn't... How do I put it? Pinkie Pie is just going to be Pinkie Pie. And no matter if she's an apple or a pie, she is just going to be the same. And with the addition of her being a pie, well, the show dynamic is not going to change at all. I will say one thing about the apple family. Okay. I will say one thing about the apple family. All this time, people have been saying different things about each one of the members of the Apple family. Like, ah, look at Big Macintosh. He's so quiet and and silent. And I'm pretty sure he has a lot going on for him. 
like he he's a very deep philosophical character. Oh, yeah. or, oh look at look at Granny Smith. She's an old fart. She's an old lady. She does all lady things. Yeah, she might be the founder of Ponyville, but they don't do anything with her. Or look at Apple Bloom. She's so hell bent on getting her cutie mark, and there is no other character to her. Or look at Applejack. She's like just apples, apples, apples. Honesty, honesty, honesty. I'm going to bag you on the side of the head. Um, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. The Apple family are a character in their own. Mm -hmm. Like, when they are separated, they are just traits of a character. But when they are together, they are a full-fledged character. They are all stubborn, for starters. They are all really stubborn. That, that, that's a trait of the Apple family. All of them are stubborn as all get out. And they are really loyal and they're very... They're, 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 Close together as a family. That's the things they have together. But Applejack is the level-headed, honest one. Granny Smith is the smart, uh, wise, intelligent one. Big Macintosh is the brute force that also has a heart of gold and is always willing to help. And he's very nice. And Apple Bloom is the naiveness, innocence with, uh, with a lot of energy. So it's like when you combine the four of them, you have a full-fledged character. They are the Voltron of My Little Pony. <laughs> oh, in that, when you combine them, you have a very good dynamic. In that, and that—that's how this. That's why this episode doesn't piss me off. Because if it wasn't for the Apple family, and how unbelievable each scene with them is, I will absolutely despise this episode because it doesn't give closure. But. The Apple family is there, and they make every single scene that they are in something incredible, because it's literally like popping your head on through a window <laughs> into someone else's house and look at someone's life. They mm -hmm. feel real, which okay. is uh, it's difficult to believe when we're talking about a show that features talking horses. Mm -hmm. it, it's that they feel so real. And probably the, the other thing that kind of disappoints me is that um, okay. Pinkie Pie is very well portrayed in this episode. Mm -hmm. If anything, Pinkie Pie has this tendency of making everyone who writes Pinkie Pie, they write her like an over-the-top, absolutely crazy, but... That's not a word! ...insane character. Mm -hmm. That uh, she has no limits. In this episode, she, she, she showed some restraint. There is some self-contained when it comes to writing Pinkie Pie in this episode, and that is awesome. That's good. And the other thing is, people were confused, or people thought that this episode was going to be a Pinkie Pie-centric episode because of the title. And with how the start focus was at Pinkie Pie, looking at the geology... Geology? Geology or...? Genealogy. Genealogy, yes. The genealogy chart. And... When we saw that, oh, it's going to be a Pinkie Pie episode discovering who her family is. And Cousin Applejack want to go bowling. So that's that. And discovering that, oh, they might be related. And let's do this. Let's do that. You can send, you can send your slaps to the face to Norman <laughs> at normansanso at the mbsshow.com. Yes. But no, um, the thing is... I swear, I'm going to send you several if you don't <laughs> stop making that goddamn joke. Okay. God <laughs> it's, it's a good one. But anyway... um. The thing no, is, it's not. <laughs> Don't interrupt me. But anyway, but anyway. I interrupt you if I need to. Anyway. But anyway, yes. Uh, the, the whole episode at the beginning was focused on Pinkie Pie discovering that she is part of the Apple family. But at the beginning, you can notice that Applejack was... Not 100% certain. They don't want to get their hopes up just to let it all crumble down just because um, a typo or a smudge being all wrong and stuff. I was expecting it to be uh, a Pinkie Pie Applejack episode. And I got something better because it was, and it is, it's, it's, uh, because it is a Pinkie Pie Apple Family episode. And those are uh, uh, good. It, it could have, the, the other thing that I was going to say is that even though Pinkie was very well portrayed, it showed restraint, mm -hmm. it was, she was well written, mm -hmm. in character, no crazy antics whatsoever, she was well in character, in my opinion, she was, uh, the, the, the interaction that she had with the Apple family was underused. This episode could have used a lot more interaction between Pinky and the Apples, and this episode could have used a lot more uh, slapstick humor mm. that didn't have to do with the Apples destroying their own cart. Final verdicts. 
it was okay. The best part was the Apple family and the way they interacted with each other and the song, which in my opinion was great. The worst part was the emotional blackmail that they put you at the end without clarifying whether Pinky is part of the Apple family or not. Although too much foreshadowing and too many cliffhangers which goes in lieu of this season's tone. Uh, are, tell me that we might get confirmation. Remember that we are going to see Pinkie Pie's sisters. Oh. Yeah, Megan McCarthy confirmed in San Diego last year that we were going to see Pinkie's sisters at one point in the season. I can't wait. We didn't see them in this in this episode, of course. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So who knows what they have to say. Oh, yeah, I mean, I hope they do something with them because it's going to be awesome. So that was my opinion. What about you, Norman? Well, overall, as a whole, I like it. It's an awesome episode. It has an awesome song. The lesson was really good. And, well, even with, in my opinion, um, choppy animations and stuff, it was awesome. And I like it. And how would I put it? It's an episode that I would watch again. And I would enjoy it the second time watching through. Oh, James, we forgot to mention that um, One Pony. I think we should not mention it at all. Yeah, do you know what? I don't want to because I have the feeling we all are going to die in seven days <laughs> oh. after watching the episode. Uh, if you have watched it, guys, you know what we're talking about. Yeah. Ooh, look, a note. Yes, yes, yeah, be careful. Do not pick up the notes. Just just stick to the path. Don't look him in the eye oh, yeah. because he doesn't have any. <laughs> but um, anyway, next week's episode, who is it and what is it? So next week's episode is uh, Rainbow Falls, which is a crossover between Gravity Falls and My Little Pony. No, no, no. Uh, Rainbow Falls is episode 10 of season 4, episode 75 overall, written by one of my favorite writers, Cory Powell, Woo-hoo. who was also the author of episodes like Just for Sidekicks and Sleepless in Ponyville. Mm, okay, that's awesome. I can't wait. No, I can't wait either. I'm hyped. After I saw who was writing this, I was like, oh, yeah, this episode is going to rock. Oh, yeah. And from the synopsis that I read, it's going to be good. Yeah, it has a... I'm not going to say the synopsis for those who don't want to get spoiled, but Mm -hmm. I like how the synopsis already sets up a conflict, so it's going to be interesting. Just the first time in four seasons that Pony will not be destroyed. Let's hope not. Yeah, if people are confused by what I meant, yeah. In Season 1, Episode 10, Ponyville was destroyed by Paris Sprites. In Season 2, Episode 10, Ponyville was destroyed by Spike. And in Season 3, Episode 10, what was it destroyed by? James? It was Discord who took over Sweet Apple Acres and he turned it into an ice skate parlor. It was like, wow. Yeah, you know what? I just realized, you're right. Every 10th episode of every season, they end up turning... Ponyville into a disaster zone, and it's usually the fault of M.A. Larson. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's kind of weird. Oh, thank you, M.A. Larson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, oh, that was good. Uh, <laughs> that was just too good. <laughs> thank you, M.A. Larson. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> James, want to sign yes. us out? Well, no, I don't want to sign us out. Oh. This episode review will go forever. No. <laughs> okay, this has been the NBA Show Reviews. I've been James Cork. And I have been Norman Sanzo. And cousin, do you want to go bowling? I'm going to kill you with a lot of extreme prejudice. <laughs> Bye, <Wow>. guys. <laughs>